those are concerns that come as the 2019 elections approach. You are already saying that, you know, you are very confident that, you know, the budget will be approved and that you will get your money in good time. Because for a long number of people, that's the underlying fact. Not just that you will get the money, but you will get it in good time. Fairly good time. Fairly good time. Are you already making room for adjustments with that, with that uh, quote there? Fairly good time. Well, maybe a little late, but we'll get it. Just concerned because now people are wondering, you have been on about continuous voter registration. Mm. Are we seeing more and more people picking up, uh, you know, going to register to vote? Because the people are also saying, we're going there. Yes, indeed, we're seeing INEC officials and in some places where things are pretty organized, you also see the banner there for INEC saying, you know, you do your continuous voter registration here. But there are concerns that we haven't seen our cards. You, I think some of them said July or June that mm. you should be able to get your permanent voter card mm. if you vote if you registered, you know, much earlier. But this is the end of July, and no, I mean, no, very very few people have received their permanent voter cards. Well, you know, for those who registered between April 2017 and December 2017, their cards are ready, they have been printed, and they are collecting. But if you register in January 2018 up till now, we said, you mean? yes, yeah. yes, we say we, we, we are we are assuring those who, the, the, those registrants that before 2019 general election they will receive their cards. So the process is on now to print those cards. Look, Nigeria is a very huge country. You know, since April 2017, we have registered over 10 million and still counting. In fact, our projection when we started was that we'll have about 10 million, but with the current rate, we may have about 12 to 13 million or probably more, you know, and we have to make provisions. We, we announced that we will suspend the CVR August 17 because the backend activities that we need to carry out will take approximately 110 to 120 days from the day to register to the date the, the cards are printed because we have to do the du duplication and, and all of that. And that has also increased interest because now people who probably uh, felt they had so much time now realize that to be able to vote 2019, they need to get that. So we are dealing with that now. We are, we are very proud of Nigerians who are coming out to get these things and we know that there are hitches, you know, we apologize, but we are trying our best to respond to these hitches. Uh, part of the measures we are taking is that we are also uh, providing mobile centers, registration centers. Apart from the permanent ones, we go to particular areas, we bring out the timetable, and then each state will say, maybe in X primary school or this location, we'll be there for three weeks, people can come there. And now we are going to open even on Saturdays and Sundays and public holidays between uh, that August 1 and 17. So people can also take advantage of that. But we have to understand that Nigeria is a huge country. We have many, many people, but we'll continue to try our best. Are you going to assure everybody who registers before the end of this continuous voter registration, because I believe that there will be a cut of, I think you just said it, the 17th of August. Yes. That if you register before the 17th of August, you will be able to vote of in course. the 2019 election. Of course. We, we, are closing, we, we are suspending 5 p.m. August 17th. The last person to register will get his, his or her permanent voter card. We are sure Nigerians of that. Mm. Just wondering then, how do you also deal, because people have been raising questions with INEX voter regi register. We know that in, uh, before now, you used to do a, an accreditation process and then do a voting process much later, from 12 to about 4 or 5 o'clock then. But now, to quicken the process, you have adopted accreditation and voting immediately. Simultaneously. Some people said that they noticed people moving from polling booth to polling booth, you know, because of this voter inducement thing, according to them. They noticed that they were able to get the ink off their fingers and were able to vote as many times as possible because they had registered in multiple places. I was wondering how that was possible, considering the fact that INEC is supposed to have a clean voter register. It's not possible. That's, 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 that's fake news. It's part of the problem of fake news. You know, each PVC is configured to function, you know, in a particular polling unit. And that's why we have the card readers. Now, if you have a fake PVC, 
you cannot vote because the card reader will not read the features. The clip will not just respond to it. That's number one. Number two, it is practically impossible for you to move from one polling unit to the other to vote because the card reader will, will single you out. So we want to assure Nigeria. What if they you have different cards on the different names, but with the same biometric, uh, you know, features, your, your face and your, of course, your fingerprints. This what INEC, if you have different names? This INEC, I assure Nigerians, that cannot, that cannot happen. Well, maybe that happened in the past, but this INEC, you can't have multiple cards and use those cards during the general election. It's not, it's not possible. So INEC the the is, process is, we have in place is so robust. You know, I don't want to sound overconfident, but I'm sure that every, every individual in this country, we only have one chance and one chance only to vote and no more. So what is the latest time that you, you would think that if our budget is approved by this date, it's going to be very difficult for us to assure Nigerians of credible elections. What is the latest, what is the cut-up you're looking at for both the executive and the National Assembly? Look, um, there are issues that I would rather not want to get into, and this is one of them. Like I said, we have our underground channels. We, we know who we are dealing with. We, we have our contacts in the presidency. We have our contact in the National Assembly. And honestly, we've had robust relationship both ways. And again, this is a constitutional matter. Yeah, but the, 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 thing, the reason you why know. this question is important is this. Oftentimes when elections go wrong, nobody else remembers all of those challenges. The, the blame falls squarely on the shoulder, or the responsibility falls squarely on the shoulder of INEC. So right now, some people will say that if you're raising an alarm, it is well in order. But what is the latest time? I know you're confident that both you know, the National Assembly and the executive arm of government will bring you know, your bu budget out on time. But what is the latest time that you're looking at if by this time the budget is not approved for us, it's going to be extremely difficult to conduct very good elections. Honestly, if we have the budget now, we'll, we'll just be fine. If you have it now, if yes. you don't have it by you know, October, it will you still be fine? Well, I, I, I think it will be out before October. I think so. I think so. I sincerely want to share his optimism. I'm sure you want to share his optimism as well. So tell us what you think. If you think that the budget will be out before October, as he rightly says. But he says he's very confident that uh, the INEC budget will be approved. And in fairly good time, those were his words. Well, we'll see how that goes. Mr. Rotimi, are you coming? We have to thank you for coming on thank Sunrise Early this morning. He thank is the very. Chief Press Secretary to the INEC Chairman. The program continues in a moment, still along this line. Please stay with us.